everyone, I am Rebecca from ChemBits, and I have a 1% stock solution of a Jacquard Hot Fuchsia, a fluorescent pink, and what I believe is a 1% stock solution of Electric Violet, but honestly I don't know and I didn't write the color on there. I think that I mixed this up from uh, the Chemnitz Hanukkah special when I did the silk sock colorway, but I don't know for sure. So we're gonna have fun and I think I wanna do some scribble dyeing today. Scribble dyeing is a technique where I have a more concentrated dye and add it to some immersion yarn. Sometimes it could be very low immersion, sometimes more water, and then we just let the colors layer and see what happens and what we think. Sometimes I do this with a lot more than two colors, but I'm curious what I'll think about it with two, and if I need to, I'll go and raid my other dye stocks. Now, the yarn for today has been pre-soaking for over a day. I have one skein of Knit Pick Stroll Fingering Weight Yarn. This yarn is 75% Superwash Merino Wool, 25% Nylon. And then there's a skein of Wool to Dye Force That Yak Sock Yarn, which is 70% Superwash Merino, 20% Yak, which gives us this deeper color, 10% uh, nylon. Now the Yak yarn looks really, really dark right now because it's wet. I promise that it is less dark uh, once the yarn is dry, but sometimes it's hard to tell what's happening on it color-wise while you're dyeing it because it can be hard to see the contrast there. The contrast with the colors is more apparent once the yarn is done and dry. Um, but anyway, now let's go and uh, set up our dye bath. We're using the hot plate today. Um, I'm bringing over the 200 grams of yarn. We should get really good coverage because our pan is going to be very uncrowded. Now, while I have my electric hot plate off, it is not plugged in. I always do that just for safety. I want to add just enough water to cover our yarn. I'm okay if the colors spread, but I think, at least initially, I'm going to try to add the color and not move the yarn. I know our pinks are going to spread out a lot because that's what fluorescent pinks do, but we'll see sort of what's happening and evaluate as we go. Okay, that has been maybe around six cups of water. We can add a little more. We're not gonna be adding that much volume with the dyes. Now I will plug in and start heating things up. Haha, -ha, which is good because I had them turned up to five already versus in the off position. And so therefore it is very, very good that we started where we did. Uh, I wanna add a fair amount of acid. Let's do four tablespoons of white vinegar. This is a lot of acid for I guess the beginning, uh, but I know that at least one of the colors takes more, a lot more time to strike. Now, depending on what we get, I do have some dyes mixed with citric acid on hand as well. And one of them I think is the same purple that I have dissolved over there. So depending on what we see and how I feel about this colorway, we can always grab speckles too. Uh, this is very much a I have this yarn pre-soaked, let's play and create something beautiful with the supplies that I have on hand. But anyway, I'll be back once we're warm. The electric hot plate can take a little bit of time to heat up, and so sometimes I will rotate the yarn, shake it, move things side by side to try to distribute the heat more. And always be careful when you're, when you're touching hot yarn, but this used to be quite cold, it is less cold in the middle. But another thing sometimes I will do is I will rotate the pan around, especially since one burner is larger than the other, that can help. But moving the water around also does help distribute things. Should grab my tongs though. Because I'm gonna want to re-fix the fiber. Okay, and I'm going to rotate this one more time. And I think we're about ready to get started. I'm just going to manipulate things a tiny bit before we start. Now, the bottles that I'm using here are tulip tie dye bottles, and so they have larger openings than some other squeeze bottles I have. So the dye might come out a little faster than I expect. 
Oh no, that's pretty good. And I'm just doing some swirls of color. You'll notice that there's also drips. Uh, things are just a bit random. And holding this over, I do have my work surface protected with a shower curtain, but I want to still try to avoid making a mess. Now, depending on how we feel, we might end up moving things around on the surface, but for now, It's okay for the way these colors can overlap or not. And I can do some more curly cues at points as well. Uh, but the thing I like, although I'm noticing these are all sort of parallel to one another. So I might want to change the way that I'm adding these colors and do other types of shapes. This is why sometimes I do hearts because by doing an emotion, then it, it's varied more. If I do a squiggle, then maybe I would vary it more so that way things are less repeating. It's funny how next to the pink, this purple looks very, very blue. I thought it was electric violet. I'm now not sure. It could be midnight blue, possibly. And it could be midnight blue not at a 1% depth of shade. Maybe from when I was doing like a variegated all like one color. Uh, it's possible that it's midnight blue because it is a lot more blue than I thought. But either way, it is very pretty and the contrast of this purplish blue and the pink is really nice. Okay, I'm gonna let this sit for, let's do five minutes and then we'll come back. But note around the edge, we have a ton of spread of the pink. I don't think we'll have a lot of white left behind on our yarn. The timer just went off and I'm curious, ooh, Okay, so when I move this, we definitely are gonna see some pink spreading, but even as I press this, notice how yes, we're seeing spread, but we still have a lot of this line that is intact as well. Now, even though I just pressed this, it does almost look like there's less spread on the yak, but I think that's just because you can't really see the pastel uh, spread. So like over this blue, which I'm more and more convinced is midnight blue, we see the halo around the spread. So you see the sharp line and then that little bit of halo. I'm convinced that's likely present on the yak as well. It's just harder to see against the backdrop, at least for now. But if I tap over here, I'm just seeing a little bit of the pinks, the bluish blurple color has struck. But this is good. I have a feeling we're gonna end up with a pastel pink base uh, with some brighter pink and then blue pops of color. I have a feeling we're gonna end up with some yarn that has some of that blue purple, some bright patches of pink with an all over more pink backdrop. At least on the stroll, I don't know how that will really appear on the yak. Because on the yak, I mean the spread here is pinkish, but we do have that brown in there to consider. And so this time, I'm trying to go way more random with the color placement. Uh, oh dear. Just so that way uh, we get better coverage. Now one thing I recommend with squeeze bottles is to turn them with intent, so that way you do not over spray. <laughs> Um, I'm gonna go check on my oh dear moment uh, and see if I have any cleaning up to do. But in the meantime, I will set a timer for five minutes. Okay, another five minutes. What's funny is that this is the point of a video where conceivably I would go into a time lapse, but each dying stage and each flip is ultimately so fast that I don't think that that's necessary today. Ooh, it's so pretty though. Uh, I'm gonna do at least one more round of dyeing, maybe two, trying to open this up and expose areas that maybe have less color already, specifically with that midnight color. But again, I'm adding it randomly, but you can pay attention to certain areas. And with the last flip, it's possible that 
maybe we'll only focus on some tiny sections. You know, heavier in some spots, lighter in others. And also I'm running out of this color, so that's important to know. But I do need to be careful with this pink because I don't remember how many milliliters are in these jars, but I do not want the pink to be too saturated because then it'll become a bleeder. And I'll see you again in about five minutes. One of the reasons why we have such good coverage on our yarn right now is that there's only 200 grams of yarn in the pan. If I had had 300 grams of yarn in the pan, which we almost did, uh, but I used the other yarn for something else. If we had had 300 grams of yarn in here, then uh, we probably would have definitely needed more flips. Now, I do think I'm gonna add a tiny bit more dye, but really, it's pretty good, and I think after this, I'm gonna call it and let it be done. But we will add a little more pink. Hopefully I don't regret this when it's time to wash the yarn. But you see, I added, oh dear, a lot less dye in this round than I had done on the previous ones. But anyway, I'm now gonna heat this for 30 minutes. And we'll see what's going to happen around the edges after that time. Uh, actually, I changed my mind. We're going to heat things for five minutes, and then we're going to add more water. Uh, and then we'll heat for 30 minutes. So I'll see you in five. I've got four cups of water and six tablespoons of white vinegar, because that's how much vinegar I had measured out. <laughs> Sometimes there is a reason why I choose the proportions I do, and other times, it is really just because that's what's convenient and what is there. But anyway, uh, I am going to turn the heat back up until we get to a little bit of a nice simmer again. Then we're going to heat this for 30 minutes. Now, it's okay if things aren't hot for the full 30 minutes because when the timer goes off, I have a feeling I'm going to let the yarn cool off here in the pan completely. And so then it'll get more heat during that time as well. So setting the timer for 30 minutes and I'll see you in a bit. It has been 30 minutes and there's actually not that much color left in the water. I am still going to turn things off and leave the yarn here to cool. But when I turn that off, I'm also unplugging the hot plate and I will remove this from the heat so that way it can cool off completely a little bit faster than it would if it stayed with the hot plate. Um, but I always check the edges before I lift it up. Um, and so once this is cool, then we can go ahead and wash it. Our yarn has cooled off considerably and I'm getting ready to wash it. Okay, there is still some pink in the dye bath, which is not a surprise given uh, the hot fuchsia that was in it. <laughs> and so therefore we might see some pink come off in the water at least initially uh, and maybe some more and that's okay let's add some dish soap hopefully I didn't overdo it with the amount of pink that I was using yep we are seeing some bleeding but again there was some pink left in the water so that is not that bad. I am squeezing out as much of the liquid as I can. And we're gonna do another fill of the basin. And see, already it is left. And I can tell you, I'm feeling the pink in the, the yak. Okay, maybe it's not a ton less, but oh my gosh, is it half water cold? Oh, it's that time of year in New England. Oh, where I have to add a little bit of hot water into our rinse because otherwise my hands get so cold. All right, I added a little more soap. I'm gonna fill this up again. Okay, oh, it's more comfortable. Still cold, but more comfortable. All right, I'm still seeing a little bit of some bleeding. 
All things considered, it's not bad, but I'm gonna keep rinsing this for a bit off camera and I'll check back in. Okay, couple more rinses and we're looking great. So I'm gonna go ahead and put our yarn through my spin dryer, hang it up to dry, and then we can take a look at the finished dry yarn. The color of the yarn base you pick or the color of the fibers that you're dyeing can make a huge difference in the final finished colorway. And I know this should be, seem obvious, but we did have two different types of bare yarn here. One of them with the yak just happened to start out as a darker color. And so on our stroll, we feel that punch of neon pink so much brighter. There's absolutely no question neon pink here on our yak yarn, but everything feels overall a little bit more muted over here, even though we do have the same colorway. Now we did have a fluorescent color. And let's check out the glow. Okay, we're seeing a huge amount of glow on our stroll, but we do still see the fluorescence on the yak. It's just not quite as vibrant or bright, mainly because it's a darker color. And so that's just the way that that happens. But both of them, again, are absolutely beautiful. Now here's a question. Would you call this yarn speckled or variegated? I'm leaning towards the latter because these bluer splotches are much more splotched. However, some of them are quite small. And so when you go and knit with it, for example, you're gonna see little specks of that blue from the way that the stitches form. So you might end up with a real speckly feel on a knit fabric or on a crochet fabric. It's hard to say because sometimes if I were gonna say variegated, I'm thinking of larger sections of color, but maybe not. Because in general, variegated just means that it's not all one color. So it's certainly variegated. But is it also speckled? I don't know. I don't know how to classify it. Um, I just know that I really like it. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and please tell me that you're already subscribed, because if you're not, what are you waiting for? I love to play with color and yarn. If you would like to get early access to some content and even some behind the scenes sneak peeks as I'm working on a new episode of Dye Pot Weekly, head over to the Chemnitz Patreon. Uh, this video is an example that I filmed as a behind the scenes live stream uh, for Chemnitz patrons. And so they can join and watch and ask questions to me while I'm live, or you can watch the replay. And if you join Patreon today at the wool level or higher, you can go back and check out all the past behind the scenes live streams. And even if you've already watched the finished edited video, you can then see the difference in what I might cut out or what I might have to re-say. I don't often film retakes because as you're dying yarn, a lot of the things are happening very much in real time and so you can't go back and change it, but sometimes things happen. And so it's a lot of fun to just share that with all of you. You can find more details about the Chemnitz Patreon over at patreon.com slash Chemnitz. But of course, the biggest way that you can help support the content here is by subscribing and turning on notifications. And you can always follow me on Patreon for free. Uh, and so then when I have a public post, like when I launch a massive pre-order for one of my big uh, series that happen twice a year or so, uh, then you can get notified in your email in addition to when I post everywhere on social media. So just saying, but anyway, Thank you so much for watching.